Okay, 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 mm-hmm. okay. That, no response, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, fellow colleagues, good morning, you're welcome to this inaugural uh, web-based lecture. Uh, we hope we we'll improve on this and develop it more and then we we'll also graduate to Moodle technology. Um, please enjoy it, make it interactive as much as possible. Good luck. Um, thank you very much for joining the lecture. This is the CMD of National Eye Center, Dr. Mahmoud Alassan, uh, that just spoke. And today we're going to talk about less induced glaucoma. And basically I will start by defining um, what is lens induced glaucoma. And lens induced glaucoma is a group of secondary glaucoma that has lens as the cause of intraocular pressure elevation. And actually this happened either because of the position of the lens that is in case of uh, intermittent cataracts when the lens is swollen and I have a comorbid glaucoma or because, okay, that's the position. Okay, now because of the position of the lens, if the lens is subluxated into the anterior chamber, it can mechanically uh, cause a secondary pupillary block or lens as a cause of inflammation. That is when there is release of lens material into the anterior chamber and cause inflammation with subsequent elevation of intraocular pressure. Now, so I'm going to take them one by one. For example, take about lens subluxation, stroke, dislocation. Um, the mechanism of glaucoma in this type of uh, lens induced glaucoma is um, there's pupillary block with secondary angle closure, or sometimes the lens mechanically block the angle and cause glaucoma, or sometimes the vitreous block the pupil and results in glaucoma. Now, this is a case of this is a case of a 45-year-old Air Force officer that had tr- trauma with badminton ball. If you look at the eye here, you will see the lens is in the AC. The lens is actually in the anterior chamber and it has already blocked the people and the patient has secondary IOP elevation. At the time he presented the pressure, the visual acuity in the eye was hand movement and the lens is in the AC, was in the AC. And then the IOP at that time was 45 millimeter of mercury. Now, based on this, we made diagnosis of uh, lens subluxation with secondary glaucoma and the patient. So the immediate treatment was to use aqueous suppressant. In lens induced glaucoma or in most form of secondary glaucoma would prefer to use aqueous suppressant. Um, and this includes the beta blockers, the carbonic anhydrase inhibitors and alpha agonists. So uh, the patient was placed on systemic and tropical uh, beta blockers and then anti-inflammatory drugs like uh, Maxitrol and then was planned for lens removal. Now this is the lens. This is the eye after the lens has been removed. And this is actually one week after the surgery and the patient's vision was 660 with plus 10. I hope he had dropped to 10 millimeter of mercury and the patient is currently maintained on steroid and antibiotic um, combination. It's still on, we still do not stop the anti-glaucoma medication. Now, the long-term plan for this patient is to continue to monitor the inflammation, control the intraocular pressure, and later we do pundal examination um, to rule out if there is any posterior segment affectation of the trauma. We also need to do gonioscopy to rule out angle recession. We need to do BSCA. Then after three months, the patient will benefit from um, scleral fixated IOL plus minus trabeculectomy, depending on, depending on what we found at examination. If the patient had angle recession and the pressure is high, in addition to SFIOL, the patient will have a trap. Now, phacomopic glaucoma is another form of lens induced glaucoma. And what happened in this one is that the lens becomes swollen. When it becomes swollen, there's increase in iris lens uh, diaphragm. And then there is, uh, the, the, so it, it, it leads to pupillary block um, as a result of change in the size of the, of the lens. And actually, sometimes the angle closure may be due to pupillary block mechanism, 
or it may be due to the forward displacement of iris lens diaphragm. Because the lens is enlarging, it pushes the peripheral iris and it covers trabecular meshwork and the patient develops um, secondary glaucoma. Now, there are some risk factors predisposing patients to having a phacomopic glaucoma. One of them is patient with intumescent cataract, patient with traumatic cataract, when you have rapidly developing senile cataracts. And phacomopic glaucoma is more common in hyperope that have small eyes in the presence of large lens and shallow anterior chamber. Now, this is a patient that we have seen some time ago that had phacomopic glaucoma. It's a 52-year-old civil servant who presented with poor vision and pain. The vision in the eye was PL. He had intumescent cataract and the pressure was 35 millimeter of mercury. Um, patient was treated. Basically, if you see um, lens-induced glaucoma, the principle of treatment is the same. Control pressure, control inflammation, and remove the lens. So the patient um, had anti-inflammatory drug aqueous suppression to control the pressure. And we did B scan and the patient was planned for surgery. Now this is the eye during the surgery. You can see this is the intraocular lens, it's in the back. And now this is the size of the, of the trap. Immediately after surgery, one day after post-op, one day after surgery, the vision becomes 624. The IOP becomes 16. And the patient was placed on steroid antibiotic and anti-glaucoma drug combination. Well, I have not seen the patient since that day. Now, another patient, another form of secondary glaucoma is picolytic glaucoma. And in this type of glaucoma, there's usually a uh, liquefaction of the cortex. There's a leakage of high molecular weight lens protein <coughs> into the anterior chamber. <coughs> so the key here is high molecular weight lens protein escape from the lens into the anterior chamber. And this one gets engulfed by micropages and together or individually, they block the trabecular meshwork leading to IOP elevation. So this is usually uh, clinical pictures in a patient with faculty uh, glaucoma. You see rapid onset of pain and redness in a patient with cataracts. And they usually have corneal edema because of high intraocular pressure, kipis, and hypermature cataract. This is one of our patients that presented with, with pericolytic glaucoma. You can see the cornea is looking hazy and has hypermature cataract, and you can see evidence of inflammation. So it's actually a 56 year old palmer that presented with spinal redness. Vision was pale. He had hypermature cataract, and the pressure at that time was about 45 millimeter of mercury. This was the eye about four weeks or so after he had surgery, but the vision had not improved. It had remained HM. And after we removed the lens and the eye was quite, we were able to look at the ticks and we saw glaucomatous optic atrophy and then the pressure was 40 millimeter of mercury. But you can see this, the pain and everything had subsided. I was looking quiet. Now, this is uncommon type of um, lens-induced glaucoma. And usually the patient has history of penetrating trauma or disruption of the lens capsule, uh, of, of the lens capsule, either during cataract surgery. Now, it is... Uh, it is as a result of the lens material in the anterior chamber, it leads to granulomatous type of inflammation, the center of the lens materials in the eye. So basically what is happening here is there is granulomatous reactions to the lens materials in the eye that subsequently leads to intraocular pressure elevation as a result of affectation of the trabecular meshwork. Now we have, this is a young man that presented some times ago. And if you see the eye here, you can see some evidence of inflammation. You can see some past formation here. And this man had a history of trauma. So we made diagnosis of um, 
lens induced glaucoma, most likely the pericolytic. But the, 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 is it a pipia all mechanic? And I had history of trauma. The vision in the eye was NPL. The pressure was 34. So he had surgery. This is the eye after the surgery. Of course, after uh, one day post of the IOP, the, the visual remained NPL, but IOP was still high. He was placed on anti glaucoma med medication and antibiotic and steroids drug combination. Now, another type of glaucoma is lens particle glaucoma, and also known as uh, glaucoma due to retained lens cortex, usually following cataract surgery. Sometimes when lens are left in, when some topical, when some lens materials are left in the anterior chamber, it can actually block the trabecular measure or elicit inflammation that will lead to secondary glaucoma. I don't have the pre-op picture of this patient, but she presented to us some times ago. She had cataract surgery about either one year or so, but we noticed there was I, um, I hope in that I was persistently high, about 25 millimeter of mercury or so. And despite maximum medical therapy, she was on three anti glaucoma medication. The IOP still remained high. So the diagnosis was actually um, pseudopachia with uh, lens glaucoma, lens induced glaucoma. So she, she ultimately had. Uh, tube surgery, you can see this is the tube of the, this armored valve. And after the tube, like one month after the surgery, the pressure is now 12 millimeter of mercury. Now, so in summary, basically what I'm talking about is, uh, these are the mechanism of uh, lens induced glaucoma, either because of the dislocation or sublocation, subluxation of the lens that lead to secondary um, pulmonary block, or that is make direct mechanical angle closure, or that is vitreous blocking the, the pupil. Now, another type of angle closure glaucoma is the lens swelling. When the lens swell up, as in case of intermittent cataract or pericomopic glaucoma, it leads to mechanical angle closure or pupillary block. And then we have the pericolytic type of glaucoma in which the lens high molecular weight escape from the anterior chamber from the lens into the anterior chamber and block the uh, and block the intertrabecular space with secondary IOP elevation. And then the last one is the lens particle glaucoma. So, but basically, I'm trying to share some little surgical parts when handling lens induced glaucoma. Um, one of the important things that we need to do is to control the pressure before the surgery. This sometimes may be very difficult because it's a secondary type of glaucoma. Unless the underlying cause is removed, the pressure cannot be controlled. But as much as possible, we try to start medical therapy to control the pressure, clear the cornea, and sometimes, or most of the time before surgery, we give IV monitor. And then another thing that you need to do is this is the eye which is already tense and under pressure. So you don't want to give a lot of volume of anesthesia, anesthetic agent. So you need to ensure you tell your anesthetic to give, you take your um, anesthesiologist to give a small volume of anesthesia. And then this is a one case that you don't want to have premature entry because I mean, the eye is already under pressure. And once there is premature entry, you'll be battling with iris. So when constructing the wound, you have to ensure you have a good long tunnel. And then adequate staining of the capsule. When you're doing capsulorexis, you need to, usually in this type of cataract, they don't take stains easily. So when you put your fluorescence, um, when, when you put your dye, you have to leave it for some time, longer than the usual um, 20, 30 seconds. So I usually leave it for like a minute or so, so that I'll be able to see the capsule very well. Another important thing that you need to do is small entry. Once, when you construct your wound, the entry into the anterior chamber should be small because you want to keep the AC form throughout the surgery. Because if the AC is not form and it's keep on collapsing, 
you can easily have Argentine flag in this type of cases. And then when you're doing rexis, you start small. You start small at the center, and then you start enlarging gradually. Because when you start periphery, and you have Argentine plaque, the rexis extends to the posterior capsule, and you have PC rex. So in conclusion, uh, lens-induced glaucoma is one of the commonest secondary glaucoma that we see in our practice. And with adequate uh, pre-op and intra-op management, sometimes the outcome may be good. Thank you. Let's So this one asks question, if there's any difference between pericolytic and lens-induced glaucoma. Actually, lens-induced glaucoma is an umbrella name. It's like, um, it's, it's a general term. Well, pericolytic glaucoma is an example of lens-induced glaucoma. It's always good to try to see which type of glaucoma the patient is having. So lens, pericolytic is a type of lens-induced glaucoma. Thank you, Mr. Sadiq. What would be your approach? A patient with traumatic cataract and high IOP. Uh, that's a very good one, um, Prof. Prof. Adekoya. Um, actually, uh, it depends. But generally, somebody that has a traumatic cataract and high intraocular pressure, I would always prefer to do combined surgery. And now, it now depends on whether there is associated subluxated lens or the lens is intact. If the lens is intact, I will put IOL at the time of the surgery. But if the lens is subluxated and there is no support for the IOL, like in this case I presented earlier, I would like to do SFIOL later plus trap. Yes. Yeah, secondary. Please, can you expand more on pathogenical basis of anaphylactic and pericolytic glaucoma? In pericolytic glaucoma, the basic difference between pericolytic glaucoma and pericoanaphylactic glaucoma is that in pericolytic glaucoma, the anterior capsule is intact. There is no breach in the anterior capsule. So the lens, high molecular weight lens protein now escapes through the micropose in the anterior capsule into the anterior chamber. And this high molecular weight protein can either directly block the intertrabecular space or when it is engulfed by the micropitch, together they block the trabecular meshwork and result in IOP elevation. While in PECO antigenic uh, or PECO anaphylactic glaucoma, actually there is a breach in the anterior capsule, mainly following trauma. Uh, mostly penetrating trauma or rarely blunt ocular trauma, where the lens particles now escape into the anterior chamber. But now, when they're in the anterior chamber, they now elicit some form of inflammatory granulomatous reactions, and they actually lead to the formation of membrane 
that cover the trabecular mange work and lead to secondary eye of elevation. So that is why pico, antigenic pico, pico and optic glaucoma, in the initial stage, it can be open and, um, secondary open angle glaucoma. But sometimes in the late stage, it can become secondary angle closure glaucoma when that membrane contract and close the angle. Thank you, sir. Please, how can you differentiate pico and anaphylactic lens particle glaucoma? Okay, I've just explained. In pico and anaphylactic, it's inflammatory process that is responsible for the IOF elevation. Well, in lens particle glaucoma, it is a mechanical obstruction of the trabecular mesh by lens particle. Thank you, sir, for your presentation. You mentioned twin trabeculectomy for patients who had picomorphic glaucoma. I want to know what was the indication for the trap if removing the cataracts is supposed to resolve the implant. Actually, why we do combine surgery in patients with lens induced glaucoma is that usually they have associated trabecular damage as a result of the trauma or prolonged IOP elevation or associated inflammation. So that is why, in addition to removing the lens, we also do trap. Thank you. Is it possible for one to obtain a good IOP just with SICS alone in some of these cases without having to do combined surgery? Is there a hard and fast rule to do trap six for majority of these cases? <laughs> I don't know why uh, you are running away from glaucoma surgery. Okay, now let me give you an example now. So assuming after you have removed the lens and the IOP become high, what will you do again? Because you know, some of these cases, if they are result from the trauma, they, they, they have some associated um, affectation with the trabecular measure. So it's always safer. If you can do the cataract surgery, why can't you do the traps? It's better always when you do combined surgery in lens-induced glaucoma. Thank you, sir, for the knowledge of us. Some more light on reduction IOP before surgery, as you mentioned, the principles of management. As much as possible, you should reduce intraocular pressure before surgery. But like I told you, generally, if you look at all form of secondary glaucoma, whether it is an whether it is um lens induced glaucoma or it is NVG, you discover that you hardly achieve good IOP control with medications. And that is why it's called secondary. So it's always better to go around. So what you need to aim is that sometimes you don't wait until the pressure becomes 12, 13. No. Sometimes you go with monitor. You can give monitor 30 minutes before the surgery, or sometimes you even give the monitor while doing the surgery. But that pressure will not come down until the IOP, the lens is removed. In a patient with one regular coma, I open and feel vision. Will you still go and do cataract surgery? Yes, because. If somebody has picomorphic glaucoma and has high IOP and you have not done anything like that, prolonged pressure to lead to corneal edema and the patient will have some secondary changes in the cornea, will have bullous keratopathy, and then high pressure also in the iris, the patient will have iris as ischemia. So at the end of the day, you see that the patient end up with NVG. That is usually the end result of untreated lens-induced glaucoma. So it's better you remove the lens at least for for his comfort and therapeutic purposes, even not for optical reasons. Thanks, sir. Must all patients with pregnancy glaucoma have combined surgery? I don't know why this is, if not, if not long-standing and past developing. So why are you trying to run away? If you can open the eye, why can't you offer the trap? The thing is that when you have everything at your disposal, if you can go and do tubes later, you can do all the cataracts. When the IOP start going up, you can go ahead and put tips. Because usually when you do trap after um, encidopathic eye, the, out, the outcome is not usually good. And then remember, these are the cases that already the conjunctiva is inflamed. Everything is not favorable for doing trap after. So it's always better to do the combined surgery at the time. This is what we have been doing and we're getting good results. So I think I have answered um, all of the questions. Okay, 
Peter, thanks sir, for the concise lecture. Is there room for implanting IOL later when implementation is controlled after traffic? We, we put the lens at the time of the surgery, unless if like I said, there is no capsule. Like in that, I was like, of course, sometimes you see, this is a very toxic eye and you may have some, this is a very toxic eye that is prone to all form of capsular related complication during surgery. So sometimes you can have, uh, you may not have the, the lens support, you may not have the capsular support to insert your lens, but most of the time we put the lens, but, but the, what you need to understand is that as much as possible control inflammations. And even after the surgery, patients with lens induced in glaucoma, they tend to have a prolonged inflammation. So they tend to be on steroid for a longer period of time. But they actually do well. And, and besides, in many of the ones I manage, when I put the lens, you see the, their vision improve. You see, once, when, you are, when, you are using, when you are managing lens induced glaucoma, as long as, or generally, as long as there is vision before the surgery, like PL, what I mean by vision, I mean minimum of PL. You don't have reason not to put the lens, unless if you cannot put the lens. Either the, the, the capsule is completely, uh, there's a large tear that, that compromise um, inserting the lens or the lens is already in the AC. But as long as that eye has some little vision, it's always better to put the eye oil so that you don't know the patient might see. Can ectopia lentis be classified under? Of course, yes. When there is um, anterior subluxation of the lens into the anterior chamber, it blocks the pupil and the pressure will now go up. Even if the lens is subluxated posteriorly, it can still lead to secondary glaucoma. So it's, it's actually a form of um, lens-induced glaucoma if there is associated IOP elevation. Thank you, sir. What is Argentine plaque and what is it important? Argentine plaque is one of the complications of um, cataract surgery when you are doing rexis. Just, just, look at, just look at the Argentine plaque as in Argentina and look at their plaque is blue, white, blue. Now, when you stain the capsule with um, palm blue and a sudden tear of the posterior capsule uh, or of the anterior capsule so you see that that white represents area of um, breakage of the um, anterior capsule so sometimes if it's confined to the anterior capsule you don't have issue all you need to do is try and soak the lens matter on that in in the back and, and basically what is happening in Argentine blood is that there is increase in interlenticular pressure as a result of liquefaction of the lens matter. So immediately you put your, um, the, you are trying to do capsulotomy, immediately you put your needle, there will be sudden and expulsive gushing out of the, the lens matter. And this sudden ex expulsion of the lens matter leads to the tearing of the anterior capsule. Now, sometimes the tear may be so large that it can reach to the posterior capsule. So it's one of such complications. And what you do, what you are trying to achieve basically is to, in that kind of cataract, is to put a lot of gel so that the pressure in the anterior chamber is more than the pressure in the lens. When the pressure in the AC is more than the pressure, inside the lens, the chances of Argentine flag is minimal. And that is why I said, during this type of case, this, the eye should always be formed. The, you put a lot of gels and make sure the AC is well formed during the surgery. It reduces the Argentine flag complication. Thank you, sir. Is two the best option for patient with lens particle glaucoma? Can they have traffic instead? Well, actually in the index case, patient had cataract surgery before and there is some lens matter <clears throat> with IOP elevation. Tube is the end, is at the extreme end. When you have this kind of case, patient following cataract surgery, there is lens matter, there's IOP elevation. What you need to do is start conservative management first. If um, 
anti and give anti-inflammatory drug steroids, give anti-glaucoma um, drugs, and monitor for the progression. Then sometimes you need to go and remove the cortex. That is why in cataract surgery, as much as possible, you should remove the cortical matter because the cortical matter can lead to secondary glaucoma. But in the event that other patient, whether the surgery has done uh, for a long period of time, maybe you have seen the patient after six months or, or one year of the surgery, at that time, inflammation may have led to pass formation, or at that time, inflammation may have led to some trabecular damage. So in that case, trabeculectomy is an option, but you know trabeculectomy, outcome of trabeculectomy is not very good in pseudopachic, but you can try it if you don't have the tube. But tube is always good in pseudopachic eyes. How are you able to convince the patient with NPL to accept the surgery considering the type of environment we have? You see, that is, that is one notion that we need to change. Um, glaucoma patients do accept surgery depending on what you tell them. You see, for me, when it comes to accepting surgery for glaucoma patients, we have, I can categorize glaucoma patients into like three or so. There are those that have good vision. There are those that have poor vision. There are those that have severely affected vision. Now, those patients that have good visions are the ones that you want to, are the one that you want to give, that you want to offer them surgery. And coincidentally, most of those ones that have vision 6669, you just see that they actually do well on, on, on medication. But those ones that have advanced disease that actually need the trap, you are running away from the trap because of fear of wipe out. But those kinds of patients that have visual impairment, that have um, some reduced vision from glaucoma, if you give them trap, they will accept. In fact, they will be, they will be, they will be following you to accept the, the, the surgery. So for this index case, of course the eye is very painful. As a young man, he's so concerned about the, his major concern was the fact that he has white speck in the eye and everybody was asking him what was it all about. So it wasn't difficult for me to convince him to have the surgery. And he accepted and the surgery was done. So if the size of the wound in trap sick is too small, will it not affect the delivery of the lens? The size of the wound in trap six is too small. Will it affect the delivery of the lens? There are two ways of doing trap six. You can do the normal like you do cataract surgery. So when you are doing the normal straight incision for cataract surgery, of course, the lens of the incision has to be good enough to allow for the delivery of the lens. So definitely you have to take care of that. And then when you do that, when the, once the lens is out, you can take the inner, inner flap and then create sclerotomy and then do um, eye reductomy through the sclerotomy site. Another one is the one I show where you have, where you have to create the flap. So that flap is not from that small flap that the lens is out. We enlarge it from the side. So it was like v shape, but it's enlarged as the base. So it allowed the lens to come out. And then when you do trap, when you do trap fecal, the, 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 the cataract surgery is done through the clear corneal incision, where the trap is done through the normal. So in either way, uh, the, the, the lens will come out. So in other words, don't make a small incision, make adequate incision. Not too large, not too small. Yeah, larger the bit. So, in the absence of any other question, in the absence of any other parts question, I would like to thank you for attending this webinar. And I hope you have learned something. Thank you.